without fur any further ado, uh, we're going to get started here. Uh, hello, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining us on today's webinar. Uh, today, we'll be presenting our multi-channel RF microwave signal generator, uh, the model 855B. My name is Sam Stevens. I'm the RF account manager at BNC, and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Edgar Guzman, who is a test and measurement applications engineer here at BNC. Uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to provide a more contextualized, in-depth overview of one of our most popular uh, multi-channel signal generators. Um, so for those watching, you can really get a better grasp of uh, our RF offerings. Um, and we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be with us uh, from throughout the world. I'd also like to uh, take this moment to recognize those joining us from Europe. Our thoughts and prayers are certainly with you. Um, so for those unfamiliar with our company, uh, Berkeley Nucleonics Corporation, or BNC for short, was a spinoff of the Lawrence Berkeley Labs uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area in 1963. Throughout the years, our goal has been to meet and embrace our customers' most demanding test and measurement equipment needs. Uh, and then when we got started in the RF industry, we partnered with Anapico of Switzerland, whose RF technology includes cost-effective, best-in-class performance, paired with unique uh, features and form factors. Uh, so over its uh, six-year tenure, uh, the Model A55B has become a trusted, tried-and-true uh, signal source for national labs, defense programs, and for a wide range of uses from quantum computing to product research and development. And the uh, success of the A55B really can be attributed to its compact form factor paired with its uh, robust and versatile capabilities. Um, in today's webinar, we will be showcasing uh, the Model A55B-40-4 in particular uh, with four channels in a 1U 19-inch rack mount. Uh, this high-performance unit offers 40 gigahertz signals with unparalleled performance, um, especially in regards to power, phase noise, and frequency switching. Uh, and we hope by the end of this webinar, you'll see why uh, we think it's the market leader in performance uh, paired uh, with per channel density. All right, now moving on to our BNC uh, service regions. Uh, so our direct areas of service include uh, North and South America. Uh, and to give everyone a quick run through of the representation in your region, uh, let me start with the United States. Uh, so for Northern California, we have a uh, ranking component sales. For Southern California, uh, we have ACETEC. And then in the Southwest, going up to the Northwest, uh, we have our in-house representation here. Um, for Texas, Oklahoma, and kind of cornering regions, we have PMR Technical. And then in the Midwest, we have Base 8. The Northeast, uh, we have Advanced Technical Marketing. And in the Southeast, we have Brennan Associates. Uh, for Canada, uh, we now have uh, Stratatech. And then for Mexico, we have a uh, Mexer. And then, yeah, if you have you know, any questions about your regional representation, uh, please feel free to contact us. Our representatives are available for on-site technical support and can present um, and coordinate any demonstration units for your evaluation. Uh, now I'd like to uh, hand things over to my colleague, Edgar Guzman, to dive into the uh, specs and features of the 855B. Thank you, Sam. Uh, as Sam mentioned, I'm one of the application engineers here at, at Berkeley Nucleonics, and I am yeah, pleased to go over some of the specifications of our Model 855B. As you can see, uh, it's the front panel of our 855B, and this is the, the four-channel variant, as you can see on the front. Um, the unit boasts a industry-low phase drift, has ultra-fast switching option, and phase coherent switching option as well. Um, the multi-channel phase coherent outputs, um, as well as variable clock reference inputs. So there's a lot of options you can do on this unit, and we'll get, in, get into those later, uh, more towards the end, where we'll list all the options and break them down for you. Uh, we also would like to mention our Model 865M-40, and you can't really see it, but uh, we have some of the smaller ones sitting in the rack back here. You'll see it in the videos later on. Um, so it's a nice compact um, signal generator. And the way we have it set up, we have two in a 2U rack mount, so they fit nice and compact in a rack. Uh, this particular model is 100 kilohertz to 40 gigahertz settable to 43.5 gigahertz around there with a switching speed of 500 microseconds standard. And with the FS option, the FS switching, you get 20 microseconds. Uh, the power on that particular unit is settable from negative five to twenty dBm, and has a f like this is just some you know basics. If you want more, the data sheets will list you know more 
of these specs, yeah, especially with phase noise. But at like the um, 100,000 or 100 kilohertz offset, we have a negative 150 dBc per hertz. So I mean, that's and that's just like a sample from the data sheet. So you can yeah look at that for you know more in depth data. Um, so now we're going to show you a little video, um, just how I set up the um, units I did for the demo and showing off the front as well as um, look, a look at the GUI and, and how it's actually used. Um, as you can see, the unit we're using does have four channels on it. So it's, you know, channel density is yeah a very big factor here. We're fitting a lot of channels into a very small space and you'll, you'll be able to see that in the video. So let's play that one. So this is the rack I have behind me and we had it set up. Yeah, we we're doing our demos and I was u utilizing three channels. Uh, the first channel was for going to a spectrum analyzer and the other two were going to a, a high frequency oscilloscope. The oscilloscope I have there, I'm just outputting a hundred megahertz signal from our 845 unit, just to you know, kind of show its output. They're all set up in a way that the power can be turned on from the switches in the front, but they do have power buttons on the front, so you can switch them on uh, using that. Or you, you know, and that's the the beauty of the rack. Like everything's right there. You can just turn it on, turn it off. Uh, not all over the place on your your lab space. It's just they're nice and confined to a uh, an enclosed rack. So, and as you can see, most of these use I believe that's SMA connectors, and I'm using SMA to BNC for the scope in particular. And the lights on the front, you can see one's on and I'm remote controlling it. And I believe, yeah, channel one is outputting on our 855B right there. So I'm gonna move on to our actual demonstration. So I believe the first demonstration, or this is, yeah, this is just the setup. So this is just showing, connecting to the, the GUI. As you can see, I have the two units there and I'm gonna connect to our 855. Just click and you connect. It's plug and play. And then you have, I go to the CW and I'm setting the frequency. I set it to a one gigahertz signal. And I, you know, I'll put the RF and you can see it on, on the scope. It's just a, a nice sinusoidal one gigahertz signal. And I change the frequency and you can see how it changes on the oscilloscope. Very easy to use. We have all the different functions there as well. So we have uh, sweep, uh, modulation reference trigger. I'll go through all those as well as power and phase on the front there for the CW that you can change. And here's the different sweep modes. This is the frequency sweep. So let me pause this real quick. Let me go back just a little bit. You can see the, the start frequency, stop frequency, and the different types. Yeah, we have linear, logarithmic, and you can make it random. Uh, how many repetitions you want. Uh, you can do infinite as well, how many points you want over that span, as well as how long, you know, the dwell time, how long you want to stay at each at each frequency. Um, very easy to set up. As you can see, you just set start frequency, stop frequency, as well as your points, and it'll sweep through. And we'll show that a little later. Keep playing here. And we have power sweep list. And we have the different modulations as well with the mod, the mod option. So we have AM, FM, I'll show those two later as well as uh, pulse modulation. And each one has their own you know, settings you can do. So let me go back a little bit. The modulation, there you go. So you can see for pulse, you have source, um, at the internal, external, as well as the pulse repetition period, pulse width, you know, all these things are settable in the GUI. And then we'll ha you have the other tabs, you have the reference, whether it be the, um, 10 megahertz 100 megahertz you know clock in clock out so everything's settable here on the gui you, just, you know you connect to it it's all right there and yeah you can just see all the options go through here and yeah so and you could go through the different channels as well so i was doing the one channel i believe that was channel one or channel two and this is channel three i, I turned on and i'm outputting it's currently not yeah, on the same frequency, so it's gonna, you're not gonna be able to see that one, but I'm pretty sure I, I put it into the right frequency here. Yeah, there it goes. So I do like, I'd like to point out the unit I'm using is not the phase coherent version. So just keep, yeah, phase, phase coherent switching. Um, so keep that in mind, because 
you know, you'll kind of see it as, as they go on. But we will show you an example of you know, phase coherence switching. Okay. So as I mentioned, you have the connectors and you know, the design. Like on these particular units, they're SMA connectors, as well as I believe that's a BNC connector on the pulse out. And the back has, you know, same thing, SMA connectors, BNC connectors, as well as, you know, the communication ports, whether it be USB, LAN, or the optional GPIB connector. Uh, everything is right there. Uh, and, you know, it's all easily visible, so easy to set up. Yeah, definitely. And just to kind of add to that, Edgar, um, you know, just for everyone watching, just to kind of keep in mind, you know, whether you get the one, two, three, or four channel, you know, units, you're really going to be able to maintain that same form factor. Um, so, you know, particularly when, when size is important with these, you know, rack setups, it can really save, you know, a lot of space. Um, and the approximate dimensions um, for, for this unit are um, 1.7 uh, inches in height um, and then a 19 inch uh, in, in length. Um, so, yeah, we're really talking about a lot of capabilities here for uh, something basically the size of a very large uh, laptop. These are just some of our phase noise specs for our model A55B. Uh, the data sheet will have more um, if you want to look at that you know, after the broadcast. So, but we have like at the 10, 10 hertz offset, we have a negative 87 dBC per hertz. And then with the low noise option, it you know, goes down to negative 100. So that's one of the options available. And you know, we show all this in, in the data sheet. So, I mean, you can go there for a lot more. It's just kind of hard to show all of it because it's, you know, it's a lot of data right, right now. And then we have the yeah one kilohertz offset and the one 100 kilohertz offset. So 130, negative 130 dBC per hertz and negative 145 dBC per hertz, respectively. So, I mean, those are, are fairly low phase noise settings and you can see the plot and there's a yeah, phase noise to frequency. So, I mean, that's pretty low to me. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. And phase coherence. So we're gonna have a video for you, it's three videos in one, I believe, or for phase coherent coherence. It's uh, it's going to be phase switching co and the coherent memory, phase coherence memory. So let me see. Look at two channels of a single unit being phase coherently switched. Let's first play it through, and then we will give some explanation about what exactly happens. I believe these were done in MATLAB. One, the rotate phase is at zero degrees, the peaks match. Then at this moment, uh, we switch both signals to different frequencies. Now we have channel A running at frequency F2 and channel B running at frequency F3. At this stage, the channels are phase co coherently switched, but this is a little hard to see since we set them to some random frequencies F2 and F3. Here, we switch channel A back to frequency F1, and then here, we switch channel B back to frequency F1 as well. We can see that when this happens, the relative phase between the channels is back to zero degrees. In more general terms, when two channels are phase coherently switched, their phase relation is deterministic for all frequencies. In this example, when both channels are set to F1, the relative phase is always zero degrees. If they are both set to frequency F2, their relative phase would be 30 degrees, for instance. This would be true each time they run at frequency F2. In this short animated video, we take a look at the multi-channel signal generator with phase-matched outputs. We will give a detailed explanation of what is being shown after we play it through. So here in the beginning, we have both channels running at the same frequency F1. As we can see, the relative phase between the two signals is zero degrees. The peaks of both signals match. Then we switch the frequency of channel A to frequency F2. And shortly after, we follow by switching the frequency of channel B to the same frequency F2. 
Again, we see that the relative phase between the two signals is 0 degrees. One more time, we switch the frequency of channel A to F3, and we follow by switching the frequency of channel B to F3 as well. One more time, we see that the phase uh, between the two signals is 0 degrees. This is true whenever we set the channels to the same frequency. They will always have a relative phase of 0 degrees. We can see that the phase coherent switching is a necessary condition to achieve phase matched outputs. Now, of course, if we attach cables with different physical characteristics to the outputs of those two channels, their phases would not match. The firmware of our model 855 supports a command that allows to compensate for mismatching cable length and therefore achieve phase matching independently of the cabling used at the output of the channels. In this short video, we will look at a single channel unit showing the phase memory behavior of its output being switched between two frequencies. Let's first go through the animation, after which we will have a more detailed look at what we see. So here in the beginning, the signal is running at frequency F1. We then change the frequency to frequency F2 and show with the blue dotted trace how the signal would look like if it had remained at frequency F1. Here it is hard to tell if there is any particular relationship between the two traces. We then switch the signal back to frequency F1 and we can see that the signal matches the imaginary dotted trace. The signal behaves as if it had been running at frequency F1 the whole time. In other words, if we measure the phase of the signal at a time T0, we know exactly what phase the signal will have at time T1 if at both times T, T0 and T1 the signal is set to the same frequency. The time in between T0 and T1 we can change the frequency of the signal as much I was going to do a phase coherence video, but we had those and they're so well done that we're like, you know, let, let them speak for themselves because they they're just, they really showed the concept and, you know, one of the unique features of our 855B. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the power range uh, of our model 855B. So I have the table here from the data sheet and it shows the power range with and without our PE4 option, which is our you know, power extended. Um, let's see. So as you can see, we have the different, depending on the different range, the power level is different. So either, you know, negative 30 dBm to uh, positive 20 dBm. Um, and as you, you go down, the range, it changes, but you know, the negative 30 dBm does stay the same. It's the higher end that goes down as your frequency increases. Um, for the PE4 option, you can see uh, the ranges for power as well. Uh, with the 33 and 40 gigahertz versions uh, having a bottom of about negative 60 dBm, and the uh, versions below that, the 6, 12, and 20 gigahertz versions have a negative 90 dBm, and they go up to you know 22 dBm down to 12 dBm as, as you increase frequency, depending on what frequency range you're in. And you can see uh, our plot of power in dBm you know, per frequency hertz, whether it be standard or PE4 on the side there. So you can see, you know, how that correlates to frequency in an actual, you know, graphical setting. So the mo model um, A55B comes in several different versions, depending on the frequency. So we have the 6 gigahertz, 12, 20, 33, and 40 gigahertz. And the 40 gigahertz is actually settable to 42 gigahertz. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so depending on what your application is, you can tailor the 855B to the frequency you need. So if you don't need 40 gigahertz and you only need up to, you know, say 20 gigahertz or 18, 19 gigahertz, you can, you know, just pick the one you need and we'll, you know, you can talk to either one of our application engineers or you know, Sam and, you know, kind of pinpoint exactly what you need on your model and how it fits your application. And I believe I have a quick little video here. Let me see. Just a quick little, it's on the spectrum analyzer just showing you. This is just a 40 gigahertz signal. So I'm just, you know, it's a brief little, little show, you know, showing you that. So you can see the nice, you know, spike there at 40 gigahertz. It's our center frequency. So, and that, because we did use the 40 gigahertz version for our uh, demos. So I, I got, got that picture for 
Um, the F55B does have uh, sweeping. So we have lists, frequency, power, and phase um, sweeping. And as you saw in the GUI earlier, you can either do uh, linear logarithmic and then random. You know, so there's a lot of different settings you can do. And, you know, how fast it does it is obviously dependent on how many points you have as well as the switching speed. So our, our standard model is a 500 microsecond switching speed, but with the FS option, you can go down to 25 microseconds. So, and I believe, yeah, we have a video showing off the sweeping. This will just be, I'm pretty sure, it's just freq a frequency sweep. So I believe it's at around 800 megahertz to 1.5 gigs is what I set the sweep as with 100 points. So, and this is a linear sweep. So it's just sweeping through on a spectrum analyzer. Yeah, you know, nothing too crazy. Just, you know, kind of showing off, how, you know, some of the features of our 855B. Let me zoom ahead a little. There you go. Yeah, so I just had it repeating. It was on infinite uh, cycle. So it just kept repeating the frequencies as it was sweeping through. All right, so. And our last demo, it's going to be, I'm going to be showing you the AM FM. It, they're kind of hard to see on what I'm using. I'm using an oscilloscope to show the AM FM. I'll, I'll kind of show, but we'll have you know more of that in a spectrum analyzer so you can see uh, much higher frequency FM. I think the one I do on the oscilloscopes in like the 100 kilohertz range as opposed to um, the gigahertz range when I do it on a spectrum analyzer. Let me find that here. Where's modulation? There it is. Yeah. So I have it set up to have two signals at the same frequency. I believe I'm using channel two and three on the 855B. Yeah. So I have them, I believe, set to, yeah, gigahertz and you know, zero phase standard power. And then on channel three, I do the same thing. I have a one gigahertz signal, and this is the channel I'm going to modulate. I'm going to do AM modulation, but I'm doing it at a one hertz frequency, yeah, modulation frequency. And I believe I'll do 45% modulation depth, and I'll, I'll go up to 80 so you can see the difference. As you can see, it's just, you know, simple AM modulation. You know, it's just springing up and down as the amplitude shifts. And then, yeah, I increase it. So just, yeah, a simple demo, just, you know, kind of showing it off. And I believe, yeah, next I'll be doing the frequency modulation. Yeah, so I have to set the, yeah, set, I set it to 100 kilohertz. Just so you can kind of see it, because at a higher frequency on oscilloscope, you're not really going to be able to see anything with the frequency modulation. The second channel, I have it set to the same same frequency. I go to AM modulation or FM modulation in this one, and I'm just, I'm gonna do it at one hertz. Yeah, that's the modulation frequency on this with a I believe it's ten thousand hertz deviation, and you can just see it like a slinky, right, springing back and forth. So as it compresses, the frequencies, you know, increase. And as it's expanding, it's, you know, less the frequencies decreasing. So, I mean, once again, just a simple uh, modulation, nothing too, nothing too crazy. And all of it done just through the GUI, very simple, easy to use. And I, I changed the, I believe, yeah. So I could have changed the modulation frequency, but it, it gets kind of hard to see when I increase it. So let's see. Moving on, and I believe yeah, I have one more video, and that would that's going to be the where is it at on a spec uh, spectrum analyzer. So this is just a, it's a one gigahertz signal with a I think I believe it's a one kilohertz modulation frequency. So you can see the freak yeah see it there the peaks the or center one being the one gigahertz and then one k to the sides two k and you know this is a two kilohertz span. But yeah, you can see the the peaks of an F modulation there. So like once again, just you know, simple modulation, just showing it off. Uh, all of this, like I said, done on the computer. Uh, no con no confusing GUIs. Very simple to use. You know, just a few clicks of a button. 
And there you are. So we have more video than we actually need. So I can, yeah, it's just the peaks on a spectrum analyzer. So, but yeah, that was our, uh, that was just two of the modulations. Obviously there are you know, other modulations um, that you can play around with. So, and uh, here's the, the available options. Uh, I want to note that the bolded ones are the ones that were on the actual unit. I was using the 855B, I was using the 40 gigahertz. And as I said, we did not have the phase coherent switching. So you may have noticed that in the videos that when I switched frequencies, they weren't exactly in phase, and that, that, that's why. Um, so, I mean, the options, they're all fairly straightforward. You know, you have the low noise, you know, enhanced close-in phase noise. And then we have the LM plus. So, and that's, you know, long-term frequency stability. And that does require the LN uh, option. So, and then you have the PHS, which is the phase coherent switching. And that, that as well does require the LN option. So, and then we have the fast switching, you know, getting it from the 500 micro to the 25 micro. And, uh, the modulation options I, you know, I showed off AM, FM. So these are, I mean, these are just a bunch of different options you can do to cater or to design the A55B to cater your needs. Um, like the power extension down to negative 55 dBm, um, as well as GPI communications. So we have the Ethernet as well as USB, and you can you know, get GPIB on top of that, as well as a micro SD card slot. So if you want to you know, save data, to a SD memory card, that's yeah possible. And I believe Sam wanted to go over a little more on these. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, thanks, Edgar, um, and thanks for going through a good portion of the, the technical components of the webinar today. Um, so I'd also like to note um, that you know, looking at the options, LN, uh, PHS, FS, MOD, and PE4, um, these can actually be added on a per channel basis. Um, so, for example, if you don't think you'll need um, fast switching FS. On all four channels, uh, it does not need to be uh, added to that many channels. Um, you know, this customizability um, really allows for greater versatility and, and cost savings uh, when putting a particular configuration together. Um, and if you have any questions on which options would be best for your application, uh, you know, please feel free to, to reach out, and uh, we can certainly determine what your ideal configuration will be. Uh, you know, depending on your application, um, I think as Edgar touched on, you know, there may be options that you do or do not need. Um, so it's definitely important to kind of, you know, fine tailor that and just figure out what's going to work best for you. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just hand things back off to Edgar. I think we're going to transition into the, um, the applications next. Yes, that's correct. So, I mean, there's a lot of applications that uh, the 855B or any of our you know, RF signal generators, synthesizers um, are tailored to. So we're just going to go over a few because, yeah, you know, each of these could be their own webinar. And I mean, like, I, I'm pretty sure we've done a quantum computing one, and that's like a whole webinar by itself. Radar simulation as well. I mean, so these are all very broad subjects that we could talk you know, a lot longer on. So I'm just going to give, like, brief overviews on kind of where the 855Bs you know, utilized in them. So we have the radar simulation, and, um, I mean, that's pretty obvious, you know, you're simulating radar, and that utilizes uh, the fast switching and performance as well as the speed. Um, phase coherent as well as the defined phase memory are important for like countermeasures to, or electronic countermeasures to interference of any kind on, on your radar signals. So, I mean, in the past, that's uh, some of the applications that the 855B uh, have been used on. Uh, there's others, but like I said, you know, this could be just a vague or broad kind of overview. Uh, quantum computing, um, you know, phase coherence, you know, definitely matters there as well as, you know, stability and phase noise of your signal because, you, you know, you're sending very, you know, complex data and you want that complex data to make, you know, maintain its integrity. So the cleaner the signal you're putting in, uh, the cleaner the signal hopefully you get out. Yeah, and they're doing all the research going on in the world right now on, on that front. So uh, the 855B is, you know, it's right there. It's, you know, being utilized uh, in quantum computing. Um, we have the phased array antennas, and the 855B is, um, in the past, has been used there for, with phased array, you have, you use it, the four channels in different phases as the yellow signal for uh, your antenna, and that's how you send the signal. So... They need to be, you know, coherent. So when you switch back frequencies, they need to be lined up. 
So, I mean, that's, yeah, phase in the name, but that's where the um, A55B is normally utilized, is in the LO signal. Uh, then we have electronic warfare. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, as the head of my department, you know, told me, uh, John Lauder, he was mentioning, like, if you have a drone flying around and you, you know, you point a antenna at it and sweep through the frequencies and you want to, you can um, interfere with its communications. Um, so, and then we have, you know, SATCOM R&D. So SATCOM R&D, phase coherence is uh, very important as well. And it's usually low power application. So the PE4 option is uh, utilized there as well. So, I mean, and, you know, like I said, these are just some of the applications. If any of you have any particular questions about any other applications, you know, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email. You know, any of the engineers here or in the sales team would be happy to discuss applications with you guys. I mean, we love talking to our customers and learning all the things they're doing uh, with the equipment we sell. So, uh, yeah. So now I think it'd be a good time to uh, bring up our uh, Berkeley Nucleonics Academy. Um, so, kind of with a key, um, you know, focus on the instrumentation used in the industry. Um, you know, these courses are great for those um, you're looking to be immersed in the RF industry, whether you're currently in college or if you're already in the industry. Um, and we actually dropped a little enroll link there, so feel free to click on that as well. Um, so for those um, looking to get into the industry out of college, uh, the Academy is really a great way to learn more about the instrumentation uh, you'll be using every day. And for those in the industry, it's really a great way to solidify what you already know and perhaps you know gain some further insight uh, as, as well. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, if you're an educator and um, would like to make the uh, Academy a resource for your students, uh, feel free to reach out as well. Uh, for students, our academy courses can be taken for half credits uh, upon approval from your academic institution. Uh, we know as you kind of you know finish your, your your years in college, there's always a couple extra credits hanging around. So it's really kind of a quick way to you know knock out those credits. Um, I would also like to mention uh, we enjoy uh, collaborating with professors on their research efforts. Uh, we can also feature your academic papers uh, and promote them on the academy as well. Uh, and if you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to our Academy Administrator, uh, Cody Cole, and he can be reached at c.cole at berkeleynucleonics.com. Uh, and to learn even more um, um, about the Academy, uh, please visit berkeleynucleonics.com and click on the Courses tab at the top of the page or go directly to academy.berkeleynucleonics.com. And just to touch on that, like I did some of the content on, I believe, the RF um portion and the quantum computing courses so it, it's tailored very much to a wide array of of you know whether it be students or a professional so we don't go too in depth but we go enough so that someone who's just learning can understand but someone who already knows you know their physics or their um you know more the mathematics behind it they won't get bored so um and a lot of the videos are very fun you know showing off and talking about the topics. So you, not only do you read them, you get to see or you know hear from me or one of our other engineers about, about the topic and how it's actually utilized and where it is today, especially in the, you know, with quantum computing, like where it is today, where it's going. And the RF, it's, you know, it's like a breakdown of the components of, you know, signals as well as what makes, you know, RF signals, all that. So, I mean, it's very educational. Uh, I had fun doing a lot of this, you know, videos there and, you know, it wasn't really a, a learning process for me because I did know it, but it was still fun, you know, talking about that information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it can definitely be, um, you know, a good sort of additional thing to have, you know, along with you if you're going through textbooks and other course material. All right. So kind of wrapping up here. Um, on behalf of myself and the team at Berkeley Nucleonics, we greatly appreciate you taking the time today to join us. Um, if, if you anticipate a need uh, for the A55B's capabilities, or if you have any general RF requirements, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, you know, together we can really confirm if, a B and, if B and C uh, will be the right fit for your application uh, in general. Um, and once again, if you're located in North or South America, please feel free to, to reach out and we can work with you directly. Uh, and if you're located elsewhere in the world, you know, please let us know and we can introduce you to your uh, direct representation. Um, all right. Yeah, that should pretty much do it. Um, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, stay safe and uh, have a great rest of your week.
Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you.